So October marks the Save the Kiwi month and we're going to be sharing loads of different information about Kiwi but also ways that you guys can help out and do your part to protect them. So today we're here at Willowbank and we're meeting with one of the keepers to talk about how she looks after them, what she recommends that you guys do and also some of the foundations that they work with as well. So let's head in. In the nocturnal house, you would see the North Island brown kiwi, mm -hmm. um, currently the most common type of kiwi in New Zealand, but found naturally only on the North Island. Um, but on site at Willowbank, we actually have um, another type of species called the great spotted kiwi, and that is a native to the South Island around this area, actually. It's um, kind of Canterbury's kiwi. Um, they're one of the biggest kiwis in New Zealand, so a female can be as tall as my knee. Oh wow. So, yeah, they can get quite big and females can weigh over 4 kgs. So Operation Nest Egg, can you walk us through that a little bit? What does that involve? Yeah, so Operation Nest Egg is this program that's been designed to help save kiwis. So in the wild right now, a kiwi chick has about a 5% chance of surviving to 6 months. Wow. Um, before then, they are getting predated um, by introduced um, mammal predators. So we're talking about stoats, ferrets, weasels, cats. So in order to protect them and to save them, hopefully, we are actually removing eggs from the wild. So we're tracking pairs and then when we know that their egg has been incubating for maybe about a month, we remove it from those birds and then we incubate it at facilities. So we're one here um, in Christchurch, there's also another one in Franz Joseph and a couple up on the North Island as well. And then the chicks will hatch and then we keep them in safe predator-free areas um, for a couple months and then the chicks will get moved to a crash site. So that's kind of like what we're in here right now, mm -hmm. which is a predator-free um, area. So it's been fenced off, predators can't get in here. And the chicks will stay in that area for about a year or until they're over 1.2 kgs. And at that point we say they can protect themselves from predators yeah. and we put them back into the wild. In terms of the, the guys you've got here at the moment, how long have they been here? What sort of ages are they talking about? So we're talking about our resident birds. So yeah. that's the browns who've been living on site their whole life. Our, yeah. We've got about 10 right now. Wow. Our oldest bird is Matt and he is 29, turning 30 in a couple months. Wow. Yeah, so he's been here, he was actually um, hatched here at Willowbank. Yeah. So this has been his home the whole time. Yeah. Um, and he's had several babies while he's been here. Oh. So I've heard from others, um, Kiwi keepers that they've got kiwis in their late 30s. Wow. Maybe even 40. Between you and me, what's your uh, favorite kiwi? Yeah. <laughs> um, they're all my babies. Yeah. Um, but I have a kiwi here, and this is the worst thing. His name is S. It's S number 11415, um, which is not a pretty name. And he was one of the first great spotted kiwis that I hatched when I became the full time person here at the park. And then we release them into the wild and we're all very happy until a few months later I get a call going, can we send S back for a little bit? He's losing weight. I'm like, But he came back to us, we got him nice big and fat again, sent him out and again they said no, he's not happy, he's not doing well out here. And was clearly not feeling all that well about being a wild kiwi. Um, but we were very lucky that he was a male. We had a great spotted female who was a rehab bird. She couldn't be released into the wild because she had a bill injury. So it meant that he could actually stay with us and be a companion for her. That's the goal, is to always release your birds into the wild so they can really do their part in saving kiwis. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Arthur's Pass for this region is kind of popular? Yeah. Is it for, like, you, would, you may find some out there? You might. Um, Nina Valley is another Nina one. Nina Valley, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, Harden, Harden Pass, Harden yeah, Valley, I'm not yeah. sure what it's called, but yeah, they're out there as well. And what, what are the signs that someone might want to look for? They're nocturnal, so that's that's the first challenge. You'd be looking for their probe marks, so yeah. they get their food by probing into the ground, um, and so they leave very obvious holes, if you know what you're looking for, and it hasn't been covered up. 
um, their footprints and then their poo. Yeah. It's pretty noticeable. <laughs> right, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What What are we talking? Are we talking quite big? I mean, it, it can be quite big, and, yeah. and usually it's the smell that accompanies it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> And so if people are coming over this summer, um, what can you, they do to help? What's the sort of things you recommend? This is always financial, so there are a lot of community groups out there, DOC, um, trusts, who are actively working towards, you know. There are two different ways. There's eliminating predators, there's protecting the kiwis, and then there's protecting the environment. Yeah. But then there's also just coming here and educating yourself about it and making sure that when you're like walking around in our 